Hi guys, I'm Bella and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I decided to start a new series where I talk about breeds and I do interviews with different people that own those breeds. So today I've done an interview with Fredrika and she has a Bichon Havanais. So I did an interview with her to talk about the breed a little bit and her experiencing with owning them. So And welcome to my channel. I'm so happy you could join me today and I thought that let's start off with giving a little presentation of you and your dogs. So like what's your name? Who are you? How old are you? All this. Yes of course. It's so nice to be here with you and uh, I'm so happy that there is someone who wanted me to talk about Bichon Havanese because that's the breed that uh, belongs to my heart. And uh, I'm Tudrika and I'm 27 years old and live in Stockholm. And uh, this is Ebba, and she is three years old this summer, and uh, she is the only dog I have right now, and she is my first Bichon Havanese. Okay, and uh, what's the backstory of the breed? Could you maybe tell me a little bit about them? Like, where is it from? Is there any associated health problems with them? Uh, yeah, they were actually, I think this the breed comes from Cuba from the beginning. And they are a mix between poodles and I think it's Mal Maltese, Malteser. Mm -hmm. um, there might be some, some something else, but I think it was poodle and uh, and some more small dog. Mm -hmm. Super cool. And um, yeah, if there is any associated health problems in the breed. Ah, uh, yeah, right. They they're quite healthy dogs. Um, they're like care. Um, I'm not sure about the English word. You um, can say it shack. in Swedish. <laughs> yeah, the shackling. Yeah, uh, the the shackling is really cheap. Yeah, the insurance. So, so they, yeah, the insurance. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Uh, so they're quite healthy, mm -hmm. but sometimes they can have problems with their back knees, their patella luxation. Mm -hmm. it's very um, common. And some some of them have some stomach issues too mm -hmm. as well, um, and need to eat allergic food okay. and some that. So that's the the two most common health issues that I know. Okay. Great. And do you know how long they tend to live for? Uh, yeah, they they quite they tend to live quite long. So for like fifteen years or so, oh. um, like uh, some small breeds. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. And uh, which health test do you think that a potential buyer should look into that the parents like have done before buying a puppy? Mm, regarding to the Bichon Havanese Club, like the BBHC, mm -hmm. the Breeders Club in Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, their health tests that need to be done is uh, to check their heart, mm -hmm. to see that the heart is okay. And you also need to check their eyes um, and the patella so mm -hmm. they don't have any like luxation problems. Okay. And they also recommend that you not breed your dog if their uh, front legs are too like crooked. Yeah, like and, this. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, like this. Yeah. All right, cool. And, That's important. Uh, and, and of course, it's it's a nice and and easy dog in the like general living, yeah. so they're not have any issues or something. Yeah, they don't Sorry? shed, like they don't lose their hair. Mm, no. No, no, nothing at all. Okay, that's so that, great. That's quite nice, actually. Yeah, <laughs> like nothing comes off. <laughs> that's so <Enough>. good. <laughs> uh, and uh, how did you get into this breed, and like, why did you choose this particular one? Um, actually, I used to work in a stable as a stablesman and a, a rider, and I, I googled at nice dog to have in a stable, <laughs> and then the Bichon Havanese turned up because okay. they don't hunt other animals. And they they tend to be where their owners where their owners is, mm -hmm. so she she always comes when I like call for her and will not, never go into like a horse's field and chase any horses or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. That's super. So cool. that's how I got into them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when did you get Ebba? Um, in the first of September two thousand and eighteen. Oh. Still my little baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, so basically, the next question is like, what criteria did you have? So the criteria you had was like that they shouldn't hunt and should be very easygoing, right? 
yeah, not hunt, be very easygoing, and it's the it's a very good thing that they don't like let any fur mm-hmm. go, as mm-hmm. we talk talk about yeah. later. Um, and I also think that it should be a small dog. Mm-hmm. Yes. That was a big thing for me. Yeah. Okay. Do you compete or train in any dog sports? And what sport would you say that suits the breed? Uh, yeah, we're competing know. in rally obedience, mm-hmm. and uh, we are supposed to compete in agility too as well. I hope that will be this year, but we'll see. Um, and we have been competing like a training competition in like regular obedience mm-hmm. too. And I know that there are some people with Bichons that um, do the like tracking mm-hmm. with them, tracking for deer and with blood and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually think that we'll, they suit like most of the dog sports and mm-hmm. uh, maybe not then that's called in Swedish like bruks mm-hmm. bruk or when when the gun shots and yeah like that. yeah but any like Regular. dog sport yeah <laughs> okay super and how is it overall like owning this breed like in everyday life um I must say that it's, it is fantastic mm-hmm. Um, there in Sweden, we are like mm, picking dog breeds in different like sections, mm-hmm. and uh, the Bichons is in section nine, mm-hmm. which in Swedish means like they are company dogs. And I really think that Ebba is uh, living up to that very much mm-hmm. because she is a real company. You yeah. can see she's just sitting here and being <laughs> super happy, not like being cuddled. Yeah, oh. and. Uh, yeah, she's a true friend, mm. I will also say. So it's um, whatever I decided to do, if it's like going for a whole day of, of training, obedience, or just laying in the sofa, relaxing, she's always up for it. And she, yeah, she she's just with me with on every plan that I make for us. Yeah, that's super good. That's so nice. That's what you want from a dog, right? To be a true companion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How many hours per day would you say that you need to put on training this breed? Um, that's a it's a hard question because what I need and what I do is a bit. Uh, um, I'm not sure. Some days, so, so, as I said, I put on like a whole day, like seven hours of mm-hmm. training with pause, of course, yeah. but. But I do do a lot of training, and some days I just uh, choose to stay in the sofa, and maybe she gets a walk through mm. the block, and yeah. uh, maybe some like trick training and mm. and stuff like that, like five minutes. Yeah, and she's happy with that. But I, I would say like in overall, maybe one to two hours a day, mm. and that's not not straight. Yeah. it's uh, all walks okay. and like attention included. Yeah. So it's very adaptable. Like if you want to be active, she'll be active. If yeah. you don't, she will rest. Yes. Good. Hey, Abba. Perhaps so work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what would you say are some of the downsides and worst things about the breed? If there are. Um, yeah, there are. There are one downside that I think it's the like common one, and that's the the fur also because she's not like losing any hair, mm. but it needs to be like clipped mm. uh yeah i need to cut it yeah maybe three three times a year is maybe to little maybe four to five times yeah. a year i need to like shave it yeah and uh, she's not super happy with it but she's she's okay with it yeah. but it, it it takes me like two hours to do it and oh. it's not so so fun yeah. so and i also need to like brush it because mm. it's uh, get, she's getting these um, um like messy yeah very yeah mm. Okay. So that's where I choose to, to cut her. Yeah. And is there any challenges when tr- uh, owning this breed? Maybe in training, do they like easily bark or anything like that? Um, yeah, she's, she's not an easily barker, but she's like, um, she's very willing to work for being a small dog, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, but the difference I would say between most small dogs and more common like working dog breeds is that when I ask about something she's always a bit like mm, what's in it for me yeah um she she can choose to follow me and do as, as she's told but she always needs to know that there's some candy or toys or stuff she she's not working for free it's the same <laughs> <Never> <laughs> yeah <is> the same. <laughs> 
Okay. So, uh, sometimes when you're going like through a whole rally obedience um, like competition, um, um, like uh, yeah, with all the signs and stuff, uh, you need to like fool her every time that she's supposed to get in a candy, and then you're like, whoa, and yeah. then you go to the next sign. <laughs> so it's sometimes a bit dragging her, mm. but uh, yeah, I would. <laughs> that's a bit of an uh, of a hardness to to train with her sometimes mm. to keep her motivated mm. every, like through a whole okay and so i got a question that asked if they how much energy they have and that she had uh, a is it called the prejudice and fadum i don't know the word yep. um that they seem like very like tired old people's dogs so what are some breed misconceptions uh, I would say that's the most common breed misconception that they are like tired dogs for old people that are not willing to work at all. And they are like slow and when you're doing agility and stuff like they, they're just, you know, don't have any, you say drive. Mm. Um, but I would say that Ebba is the opposite. Yeah, that's the word. Uh, to that because she's super fast and uh, I am the slow one <laughs> when we're doing agility and that's the more of the challenge than she being slow yeah and that's, it, actually there have been uh, training companions that have asked me how do you how have you done to get her this drive mm. and the answer to this is I, I haven't done anything it's yeah. just how how she is yeah. so yeah okay cool if there are um, five words that you could use to describe this breed, like what would they be? Like some attributes. Yeah, I would say um, happy, um, a friend because she's really a friend, yeah. uh, cuddly because they love to cuddle, <laughs> and um, funny because they have so fun personalities. And on the last one, I would say, um, yeah, playful, playful, I would say. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Time. She's very playful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so for who would you recommend this breed? Can everyone own it? And would you say it's a good first time dog? Yeah, that's what's one of the amazing things with this breed, I think, because they can be owned by anyone. I, I would totally recommend it as a first breed. But but also for someone, I mean, I like the dog, love the dog competitions and stuff like that. And I am definitely trying to get another one when I when I want another one mm -hmm. because they can be so nice sports dogs. And as soon as you want to, they can be like your sofa friend. And yeah, yeah, they fit everyone. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Are there some like general breed specific traits that you've noticed that like a bunch of the Bichons have? Like for instance, um, are they all silly or are they all very playful or? Yeah, I would say that they're really like open to new people. Mm -hmm. uh, when I met friends of Ebba, they are all like, you know, standing on their hind legs and ah, yeah. just wanting to be cuddled and they're very happy dogs, mm -hmm. very, very happy and uh, yeah playful and like very <gasps> yeah to very social everyone. and open right yeah yeah i when we met um what's his name the white one that we met i forgot melvin melvin yeah when i met yeah. melvin i was also surprised that uh he was like so open like he never met me before but he was like hello who are you oh you're fun like he was so <laughs> yeah. yeah i would say the the same thing because when i met melvin i I realized that everything I really like about Ebba too is is for the breed. It's mm. not only Ebba's specific; it's yeah. it's for all the Bichons, and yeah. that's maybe super happy that they are like breed general personalities. Yeah, super cool. Do they know what? Uh, do you know what different colors they can come in, and do you have a preference? Uh, they can come in in all colors. I think they can be like like Melvin, almost white, mm. and to almost totally black mm -hmm. like Ebba yeah um, and I will actually say that her co her color is my preference yeah because it's all black so she's not turning so dirty yeah but she also had this Santa beard yeah. that it makes her easier to get a nice picture of yeah <laughs> cool <laughs> I also like her color a lot if you could choose another breed to compare the Bichon Havanese with do you have one that's similar 
Um, they, they are, of course, quite similar to the like Bichon Frisea and the Bolonka too, because they're quite near, um, the breeds are quite near each other. But uh, just for a joke, I need to call Ebba sometimes my mini BC because she's sometimes like a mini border collie because she, when she's in the right mode, she's so happy and willing, willing to work. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this breed was another animal. What kind of animal would they be? <laughs> I actually Googled this one and found the perfect one. Mm -hmm. uh, if the Bichon Havanese was an animal, they were like the Australian quokka. You know, the like smiling rats that yes. people like, <laughs> take their songs with. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> can see that. Fun, yeah. I totally see that. Uh, is there maybe a fun fact about this breed that is not so common knowledge? Um, yeah, actually, because when their their breed like turned up for the first time in Cuba, mm -hmm. they were like the bed warmer for the royalty's feet. Yeah. So that's quite fun because I used to say that, uh, yeah, when I go to like competition and trainings with Ebba, I'm like training a Cubanian bed warmer. <laughs> Lastly, is there anything that I missed that you would like to add? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I think this was uh, really good and overall to you about how it is to, to own a Bichon. And uh, Maybe some people will look at this and be like, oh, no, it can't be that good and so it can't be so easy and fantastic. But uh, I would say, yes, it is. Yeah. They are really easygoing dogs. Yeah, super. Okay, then that is all. Thank you so much for being a part and answering all our questions. Please plug yourself, all your social media. Where can we find you? <laughs> yes, you can find me on Instagram and then our username is Ebba underline Havanes and then the Swedish spelling of Havanes. Yeah, super. Thank you so much. That is it. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give this video a like, subscribe and comment down below and share this video with somebody if you think they'd be interested in this breed. I hope you enjoyed it so, so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, <laughs>